Good evening. Today's verse of day is a continuation from the same verse of yesterday, Daniel 2, 21. He changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. God sets up kings and God removes kings. Yesterday, we spoke a little bit on this dynamic. But today, and maybe the next three days, I want to touch on a specific relationship with King Saul and King David. Now, their dynamic really shows us a lot about leadership and waiting. Saul was the, was the king first, and then David was anointed to be king after Saul fell. But how did David react to that? So we need to go more in detail and read a little bit of the actual story to get some understanding. So, in 1 Samuel 8, 4 through 6, this deals with the nation of Israel wanting a king. Now, before that, they had judges. Samuel was, in fact, their judge at the time. And the Lord, God, was to be their king. They weren't to have a, a king like all the other nations. But they so yearned to have a king. They wanted to be like everybody else. Lord, can we have a king? Can we have a king? 1 Samuel 8, 4-6 says, Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah, and said to him, Behold, you are old, and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint for us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed to the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Obey the voice of the people and all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. See, the Lord did not break the will of the people. You guys want a king? You don't want me to be king over you? That's fine. I'll let you have what you want. And like it says, the Lord sets up kings or remove kings. If we want to have a lesser king than him, he'll allow it to happen. So we move on to the story, a few chapters, 1 Samuel 10, 1 through 9. And this deals with when the Lord finally finds someone that he knows the people would love to be their king. Now this, mind you, this is, king, this is going to be King Saul. And Saul is a very handsome man, the most handsomest in all Israel. He's also the tallest man in all Israel by a head height. Nobody reaches his shoulder. And the Lord knows that this is really going to please the people, so he allows it. But he also still gives Samuel an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And not Samuel, Saul. An outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He, he gives him a little helper, not to dwell in him, but uh, outpouring. He still it's not like the Holy Spirit can dwell in us today. That's why they still send so much more to kings back then than what we can now that Jesus died and resurrected. So anyways, first Saul ten, one through nine. Then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him and said, Has not the Lord anointed you to be prince over his people Israel? And you shall reign over the people of the Lord, and you shall save them from the hand of their surrounding enemies. And this shall be the sign to you, that the Lord has anointed you to be prince over his heritage. When you depart from me today, you will meet two men by Rachel's tomb in the territory of Benjamin and Zelza, and they will say to you, The donkeys that you went to seek are found. And now your father has ceased to care about the donkeys and is anxious about you, saying, What shall I do about my son? 
Then you should go on from there farther and come to the oak of Tabor. Three men going up to God at Bethel will meet you there, one carrying three young goats, another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a skin of wine. And they will greet you and give you two loaves of bread, which you shall accept from their hand. After that, you shall come to Gibeah Elohim, where there is a garrison of the Philistines. And there, as soon as you come to the city, you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with harp, tambourine, flute, and lyre before them, prophesying. Then the Spirit of the Lord will rush upon you, and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. Now, when these signs meet you, do what your hands finds to do, for God is with you. Then go down before me to Gagal, and behold, I am coming down to you to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice peace offerings. Seven days you shall wait until I come to you and show you what you shall do. When he turned his back to leave Samuel, God gave him another heart. And all these signs came to pass that day. Those were some very specific signs, weren't they? <laughs> You'll meet this person down this road. who will have a fish, a tambourine. So many different signs. Uh, meet some prophets along the way. And all these things that Samuel said, because Samuel was God's prophet, one of the Lord's prophets, came to pass. Okay, and there is there is a a rush of the Holy, Holy Spirit. It says, "What does it say?" It says, "The Spirit of the Lord will rush upon you." So he had that. Now I'm going to reread what I I read yesterday about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So you realize it's not the same. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit is the action by which God takes up residence in the body of a believer in Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, the Spirit would come and go from the saints, empowering them for service, but not re necessarily remaining with them. See Judges 15.4, 1 Chronicles 12.18, Psalm 51.11, and Ezekiel 11.5. Jesus revealed to his disciples the new role the Spirit of Truth would play in their lives. He lives with you and will be in you. The Apostle Paul wrote, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. So again, it was different at that time. But the Lord gave him a helper. All right? So I had to speak on the anointing of Saul. Because later we're going to show how Saul does not please the Holy Spirit. And how the Lord has to choose another king even while Saul. He has to anoint another even while Saul is king. But it, it this dynamic, what it, what it deals with in your life is what should you do if you are in waiting? If you have someone who is in charge of you and they seem unfair, we can learn about a lot about the, the, the dynamic of David and Saul on how we should go about handling ourselves. God let that person be over you for a reason. And we'll continue this tomorrow to talk about the dynamic of King Saul and King David. Up, oh, let's pray though. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for blessing us to see another day. Lord, I I pray for pray, pray for parents, Father. Yes, I pray for myself as a parent. I pray that Baby Kai, gas in his stomach goes goes away, Lord. But also, I pray for parents that we are patient with our children, and that we reflect the love that you have for us. And, and Lord, I I pray that that you help us be leaders and 
leaders in the making, Father. And Lord, I also pray, the most important prayer, that many may be saved through you. Thank you for what your son has done, Lord. In Yeshua's name I pray, amen. Goodbye.